I'm Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another not-so-much review. It's kind of a review discussion that will get into spoilers about WandaVision. Now, I'm recording this after watching the fifth episode before the show has ended. So anything I talk about, uh, you know, going forward from this is just me talking off the top of my head. I have no idea what's going to happen. And I will get into minor spoilers. So if you haven't watched the show yet, please turn it off. I will be talking about a big spoiler that happened at the end of, of the episode five, because that's kind of the catalyst for why I did this and what this means for the MCU and that kind of thing. But That'll be in a few minutes if you want to <laughs> take your chances and hope I don't spoil anything. No, really, if if you're not into spoilers and you don't want to know, turn this off. Go watch the five episodes and then come back and talk to me. Now, I have stopped doing TV show reviews per episode because, as some of my favorite YouTube commentators have found out, you really can't review an episode of a TV show without getting into spoilers week to week. And I found out quickly on shows like The Mandalorian, it just it, it, it wasn't right. And it's also hard to find enough to talk about in one episode um, sometimes. You know, some episodes are just... You know, there isn't enough of a creative spark in me to go, I want to deep dive into this. But we're now getting to some stuff in WandaVision after the first few episodes that are like, okay, now we can do some deep diving (laughs) into this show. Now, I am open to the Marvel Universe or any universe changing things, doing things differently. I've been pulling for DC for years to figure out what they're going to do and do it well and do it great. And I'm just not along for whatever they've done. The movies have been mostly disappointing. The TV shows have been mostly... I did watch Arrow for a few years until it went off the rails. Um, I haven't watched anything on the DC network. Um, I hear good things about Doom Patrol and stuff, but I've been so disappointed. I, growing up, I have Marvel comic books. I mean, I was a Marvel fan. Didn't really know that I was a Marvel devotee until later in life. Um, but if you go back and look at my my drawer full of comics that I had as a kid, they were all Marvel titles. I didn't have a Batman. I didn't have a Superman. I had X-Men. I had Doctor Strange. I had Iron Fist. You know, uh, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm not... I'm not I like what the MCU has done with their movies. I can't say all 20... 324 movies are all fantastic a few are just okay but what they did was 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 unbelievable that they tied all that stuff together with the two avengers endgame uh movies and it they have created the kind of comic universe that i think any comic book company would love to have because if you read comics, if you were into comics, anything can happen. When a new season happens, when it's a new year and they're starting new series, uh, comic book companies have always done that alternate Earth storyline or that alternate universe storyline. And it's hard to do that in movies sometimes because we are, well, you don't want to get over people's heads or get too confusing with all. I mean, the X Men was flirted with a lot of time travel stuff, and it, it you know they kept it from getting confusing. And I thought most of the X Men movies were pretty good, um, but you know to do what Marvel is attempting now and such, um, unbelievable. Um, so anyway. Talking about WandaVision, the first two episodes, like a lot of people, I thought, well, these are great homages to these old TV shows that I grew up watching or whatever. And and then by the end of the third episode, okay, okay, now we know something's going on. And, and now in the fourth and fifth episodes, they have, okay, there is something going on, and here we're going to get into some minor spoilers, that there is this anomaly going on in Westview that maybe or maybe not Wanda is in full control of. She obviously is controlling some of it, and it's what she wants, but is she being mind-controlled? Is she being influenced? And I personally think she is. I don't think, she, I mean... In the comics, there she well, she wasn't exactly good when we first met her in the Avengers either. But she learned to play with you know the team, and she's always you know been more passionate and wanted to follow her passions more to save her brother, to save Vision, than a, a full team effort. And she was going to take on Thanos all by herself. So I mean, you know, she's she there. There is much to the character that yeah, she does want to be independent and do her own thing. Um, but that being said, um, you know. 
if they make her the big bad villain of all this, that she's doing this on purpose and whatever. Because when she comes out and talks to the members of S.W.O.R.D., it sounds like she it does know what she's doing, and this is what she wants. But it, it also rings to me of someone who's on a bit of mind control themselves, and she's being influenced to think this way, and, and she's going to shake her head like Samantha and Bewitched or something, and it's all going to, oh yeah, this shouldn't be this way. And I think maybe it's going to be Vision saying some of the things he said that's going to eventually get to her and and break the spell or whatever. And that's how we're going to get into now what is really going on. We don't know. Um, I think they've done a brilliant job. Uh, In retrospect now, maybe they should have put all the episodes up first to binge because I know a lot of people that weren't thrilled with episodes one, two, and and up until the end of three that people, it kind of ran some people off. They were like, okay, this is cute. And even some good friends of mine, I don't know if it's going to be like this the whole time. I, you know, um, and I think they could have only done so much with that retro kind of thing anyway. And adding more in the fourth and fifth episode like they did, the more layers now and what's going on outside of the anomaly and that kind of stuff. That really, uh, you know, added to some to some real depth to not only this, but what's going to happen in the MCU. Because we know that her character immediately goes into the next Doctor Strange movie in the Multiverse of Madness. She went into filming right after finishing this in November. Um, And so this is going to wrap up and lead up to the next few movies. I think it's I heard about Spider-Man today, and he says they're just going to continue making the Spider-Man movies they've been making, but you know, there's been a lot of rumors about how it's going to tie into the multiverse, and that was the first movie that really mentioned the multiverse was uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, but that's a whole other story. So what I was getting to, and the, the, the fact that the, what this means for the MCU, we all heard the big story that Marvel finally got its heroes back, that the, 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 Disney bought Fox, and the MCU now can play with X-Men. We can, we're now getting a, a Disney Deadpool movie. It will be rated R. Um, and they've been talking about they, they were going to take their time and figure out the right way to work the X-Men into the Marvel Universe that's already established. And as we're entering this fourth theme, this fourth thing of the Marvel Universe, fourth generation, if you will, um, it's time, I think, to do it and do it uh, some sneaky ways, it turns out. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, here's the big spoiler. At the end of WandaVision episode five, there was talk of her brother. And we know through what character said in the show that her brother died in the Avengers movies. Um, But she really wished her brother was around. And at the end of the episode, her brother shows up. But it was not her brother from the MCU. It was her brother from... (laughs) <laughs> the X-Men movies. So they brought the first Fox X-Men character to the MCU that way, playing Pietro Maximoff or Quicksilver. And Evan Peters, the actor in the X-Men movies, just shows up at the end. It's like, hey, sis. And Kat Denning's character, Darcy Lewis, when watching this, they recast her brother or she recast her brother. It's interesting. Now, Let's take a look at something that was said in the show that they can't she can't bring back the dead. That that was said more than once. And the vision thing, she we found out she stole his body. So that may be a little bit different, but she can't bring back someone who is dead, but she wanted her brother to come back. So they brought back her brother from a different universe. That that just blows the door open on how they can bring the X-Men into this in many different ways with the multiverse of madness, with the multiverse thing. They don't have to say that the Fox movies didn't count. They didn't happen. They can now be in another universe and that her powers brought this version of her brother into this universe. Now it may be something else. We might find out in the next episode. It's, it's something else completely, but I think this is a, this somebody had a stroke of genius um, and we knew there was a, you know, it takes a, a edge off the surprise that we knew Evan Peters had been um, cast for an undisclosed role. And uh, instantly fan theory is like, well, he did play her brother in another universe, but not in the MCU movies. And 
if her character cannot bring back someone from the dead to be in this little world from her, then it totally makes sense that she could bring back another version of her brother who is not dead. How about that? And that, I hadn't even thought of doing something like that. I think it's it's great. Uh, by the way, bringing Darcy Lewis and Jimmy Woo from the movies into this show fantastic it, it it's obviously a low-cost way to tie the tv show into the movies and the and the overall universe but they've become fan favorites and people are talking about we want a jimmy woo show we want like an x-file show with jimmy and darcy kind of thing and i would totally watch that also one of the things they built on is monica rambeau that she was the little girl in captain marvel you know carol danvers meets and it's her mother who started S.W.O.R.D., which is the space version of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, S.W.O.R.D. kind of is taking care of things that are more galaxy-oriented, where S.H.I.E.L.D. takes care of things here on Earth. And so when she comes back from the snap, that's another wonderful thing they did. They showed us coming back from the snap, which we didn't really see in the movies. And she wakes up in a hospital. And it's been five years, and she doesn't realize it. And other people are coming back at the same time, and it's a bit of chaos. And I thought that was a brilliant scene. I just thought, wow. I mean, they, they really... It was interesting and th- they brought Dick Van Dyke and these other TV uh, producers and actors from the old days to come in and make sure they got the sitcom parts right, but then to do all the MCU parts right, to bring back the right characters, to, to bring back situations that we had thought of or talked about or heard of but didn't see, and showing another side that is exactly what an MCU TV show should do. And this is why the Netflix MCU shows failed because they weren't able to tie into the MCU. Those were Netflix shows. Uh, Marvel helped, but they couldn't. And we're not going to see, unless it's a multiverse of madness kind of thing, some of those actors appear in MCU, but maybe we will now. You know, This is opening up some doorways to do, as I mentioned earlier, comic books always did kind of alternate universe, alternate Earth shows um, or series. And it's funny, we're getting an animated show that is called What If, that is also going to be telling alternate versions of reality. What if Captain America was a woman? What if, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and it'll be a, just an animated show for fun, but they've got all the main voices coming back to voice that. And it's, a, it's a, again, a brilliant idea to do some of the things that make reading comic books so much fun. Seeing your characters in other situations, in other ways. And, you know, it's just... It's it's a not just a way to extend the storytelling and extend the universe, but it, it's fun, especially if you get to see your favorite characters do interesting things. So I am very excited to wherever WandaVision goes, and I'm very excited now about what's coming from the MCU. This is some smart TV. Uh, I know a lot of my friends after the first two episodes like this dumb, and, you know, it's not working for me. And I get it. I, it took me a little bit of a, you know, I had to want to watch that third episode. But by the end of the third one, I was hooked. By the end of the fourth one, I'm totally in. By the end of the fifth one, I think this is a brilliant TV show. <laughs> I just think they're they're doing it right. And say what you say about Kevin and his role over the MCU, but, you know, they came up with a plan and they've executed a plan. And for now more than a decade, Marvel has ruled. and And for good reason. It's entertaining stuff. Yeah, a lot of it's comic book stuff, and it's just, that's what it is. But entertaining storytelling, I mean, this this is very interesting. They took a chance, and it's working, you know. The uh, Mandalorian took a chance of putting a Baby Yoda in there, and that worked great. Uh, this one's taking a chance with messing with universes and mythologies, and I it created so much talk this week. There's been news stories in my feed just a couple days after its premiere talking about what this means for the MCU and the Fox properties and all that kind of stuff. I think it's amazing. So kudos for WandaVision. I, I said in a few podcasts, about 100 podcasts ago, I'm, I'm tired of the whole slow burn thing. But in this particular case, it really worked because two episodes of that black and white sitcom type stuff made me go, okay, I want more. I, I, I need to know more. And watching the third one, I'm like, okay, this better, you know. <gasps> and then by the end of the third one, they were off and running. And the fourth and fifth, uh, I'm a fan. And so I, I, I hope it wraps up as well as it's going. They talk about there's still a big surprise and a big thing that's going to happen. They spent a lot of money on the show, and they haven't spent or showed us a lot of that money in the first half of the season. So I think we're in for some some big things on WandaVision. So that got into a little spoiler uh, talk about what uh, WandaVision and the MCU may be doing in the future. What do you guys think? Um, I, I was blown away by Evan Peters appearing, and and then the more I thought about it after the show, was like, 
I, wow, this really stirs things up. This really, I, mm, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see what's going to happen next. I'm all in for WandaVision from here on out. I'm Scott Hamilton. I'm Rockfile. Put any comments below and we can discuss. Um, going to be doing some stuff with my Patreon coming up very soon. Where we can do some uh, question and answer sessions, some one-on-one and some Zoom things and things like that. So hang out for that. I'll give you full details when I when I get it. It'll be on therockfile.com. So check that out. Like, subscribe, share, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you.